Welcome back to class today. In our lesson today, we shall be considering indices that have to do with quadratic equation. So looking at these initial equations or exponential equations, we are going to reduce them to quadratic equation and simplify to find the values of x. Okay? So sit please as we demystify it. But before we continue, you, can, you may need to check back my previous lessons on indices, where I handled the laws of indices, linear equations involving indices, and simultaneous equations involving indices before you go through this lesson because those ones will give you background knowledge to what we want to do here but we'll try as much as possible to explain every details in this question let's go the first thing i'll do is to expand these powers to two different bases using multiplication i'll have 4 raised to the power of 2x times 4 raised to the power of minus 3 this power here minus then open a bracket and do the same here. I'll have 4 raised to the power of x times 4 raised to the power of minus 2 minus 1 equal to 0. So I've succeeded in expanding the powers to different bases using multiplication because whenever you have two powers adding or subtracting, we can use multiplication or division to expand the powers. So from here, you agree with me that we'll have 4 raised to the power of 2x times 1 over 4 raised to the power of 3. The reason is because this 3 is negative, so we have to introduce an inverse. Minus 3, same here, 4 raised to the power x times 1 over 4 raised to the power 2 minus 1 equal to 0. So at this point, you multiply. If you multiply, we're going to have 4 raised to the power 2x over 4 raised to the power 3 minus 3 into 4 raised to the power x over 4 power 2 minus 1 equal to 0. Then my next focus will be to eliminate these denominators. And to do that, I will use the highest power of 4. The highest power is uh, 3. Use the highest power of 4 to multiply all through the equations. That means I'll multiply this one with 4 raised to the power 3. Multiply this one as well with 4 raised to the power 3. I'm multiplying everywhere. I also multiply 1, 4 raised to the power 3. Multiplying everything. You can also multiply this one, 4 raised to the power 3. Then 4 raised to the power 3 will cancel 4 power 3. So I will have 4 raised to the power 2x. What again? 4 raised to the power 2. We cancel 2 out of here. I will still have 4 remaining. Because 4 power 3 means that the 4 is 3, whereas we have it 2 here. So 2, we cancel 2 here, I will have 4 down. So bring it down. That means I will have 4 times 3 remaining here. Okay, what do we have remaining here? 4 power x. This guy is gone entirely. Then 4 power 3 multiplying 1 will give me 4 power 3. Equal to 0 times anything is 0. So let's see what we have next. Let's multiply 2 and expand 2. This is 4 power 2x minus 4 times 3 will give me 12 into 4 power x. Over here, 4 power 3 is 64. I'll have 64 equal to 0. This 4 raised to the power 2x can also be written as 4 raised to the power x2 because multiplication is commutative. All right? So keep your eyes on this. I'll tell you what we do with it. So import any variable of your choice aside x. Use it to substitute for 4 raised to the power of x. Anyway, you see 4 power x, you put that variable there. So let us use p. Let p be equal to 4 raised to the power x. That means anywhere I have 4 power x, I'll put p there. So let's come to this guy. 4 power x power 2. That means I'll have p raised to the power of 2. That is for this guy. Okay? Minus 12 into p minus 64 equal to 0. So I have a quadratic equation. We can now remove this bracket. I have a quadratic equation. So the next thing we are going to do is to solve the quadratic equation and get the value of p. When we have gotten the value of p, we proceed to get the value of x, which is our final bus stop. So to solve for the value of p, we solve the quadratic equation. So I have my product to be minus 64. I want to believe you know how to solve quadratic equation. Then also have my sum to be equal to minus 12. 
So what two numbers can I add to get minus 12? If I multiply the same two numbers, I will get negative 64. Let us try minus 16 times 4. If minus 16 multiplies 4, we are getting minus 64. In the same vein, minus 16 plus 4 will give us a negative 12. So what we are going to do is to use 16, negative 16 and positive 4 to substitute for 12 in this equation. So what do we have? We are going to have P raised to the power 2 minus, I will now write 16 P plus 4 P minus 64 equal to 0. Minus 16 P plus 4 P will give me back my minus 12 P, okay? Over here then we continue. We group and factorize. We have p to be common. I'll bring p outside. p dividing p square will give me p. p dividing 16 p will give me 16. I have 4 to be common here. So I'll bring 4 outside. 4 dividing 4 p will give me um, p. 4 dividing negative 64 will give me negative 16 equal to 0. So I factorize. You can regroup it as p plus 4 and then p minus 16. Taking one bracket, since the same, both of them are the same, equal to 0. So from here, we can quickly deduce that p is negative 4 or positive 16. Taking the additive inverse of 4 and additive inverse of 16. So we've gotten p as minus 4 and 16. But we can now quickly go back to that place where we imported the variable, variable p, which is p equal to 4 raised to the power x. Let us use it and get the value of x. But we are not going to make use of negative 4 at all. We are not going to make use of negative 4 because it is negative. Our concentration is always on the positive value. So recall that p is equal to 4 raised to the power x. Now our p is 16. So what do we do? We are going to say 16 is equal to 4 raised to the power x. Write 16 as its index. That is 4 raised to the power of 2 equal to 4 raised to the power of x. The bases are now equal. If the bases are equal, that means the powers are also equal. So we can equate the powers since both of them are equal. So my x will be equal to 2. I've gotten my x to be equal to 2. Ignore this one. But if this guy is positive and this one is also positive, then you are solving the same thing you did for 16 for 4. But 4 is negative, so leave it like that. Our answer is 2. So 2 is the value of x that will satisfy this equation. If you plug in 2 here and here, you are getting 0 for this equation. You can try it out. Let's go to the second question. To solve the second question, we discover that the power is already a quadratic since I have a power of 2 in the exponential function there. And we have 1 here. So what do I do? If I can get this base and this base to be equal, then I will equate the power. How do we do that? I will have 2 raised to the power of 2x power 2 plus 15x plus 7 equal to 2 raised to the power 0. 2 raised to the power 0 is 1. Any number raised to the power of 0 is 1. That is one of the laws of indices that we considered. So having done this, that means these two bases now are equal. I can comfortably equate their powers. So the powers I will have is 2x power 2 plus 15x plus 7 equal to 0, which is the powers. So at this point, we already have our quadratic equation. So we go straight to simplifying the quadratic equation. To simplify the quadratic equation here, get your product first. What is our product? The constant. This is the constant. But our x square has a coefficient 2. Use that 2 and multiply 7 to get your product, which is 14. So the next thing we want to get is our sum. Our sum is always the coefficient of x. So what's the coefficient of x here? That is 15. So we are looking for two factors that when we multiply, we get 14. If we add, we get 15. Multiply the two numbers, we get 14. Add the both, we get 15. No other number than 14 and 1. 
14 times 14 will give me 14. 14 times 1 will give me 14. Then 14 plus 1 will give me 15. So we are going to use these two factors to substitute 15 in this equation. So we are having 2x squared plus 14x plus 1x, but I'll not write 1. I'll just write x plus 7 equal to 0. 14x plus x is giving us back our 15x. So the next thing we are going to do is to group 2 by 2 and factorize. x is common here, 2 is common here. Bring the common terms outside. 2x dividing 2x squared, we have x remaining. 2x dividing 14x will give us 7, all right, plus nothing can, be, can come out here, so we can bring out 1 as our coefficient. So I will have x plus 7. Now, you must know that this bracket and this bracket must be the same, equal to 0. So group the ones outside, so we are having 2x plus 1 to be equal to 0, taking the ones outside equal to 0. Then the second one, the same thing. I mean the bracket, take 1, x plus 7 equal to 0. So at this point, make x the subject of the formula. So 1 will cross over the policy side, we'll have x to be equal to minus 1 over 2. Same happens here. 7 crosses over the policy side, so I'll have x equal to minus 7. So we've gotten the values of x to be either minus 1 over 2 or minus 7. That is the solution to the quadratic equation, which is the power of the initial equation or exponential equation. I will solve one more, and when I've done that, I'll leave you to solve the fourth one, but I'll explain to you what you will do in this first one. So let me solve the third one. Now to solve the third one, the first thing I should do is to make the basis to be equal. I have 2 and 4 here, so let me reduce them to be equal. This is 2 raised to the power x power 2 minus 24, equal to 2 raised to the power of 2. 2 power 2 is 4, okay? Multiply your x, the original power. The bases are equal now, so we are going to drop their powers. So we are going to have x squared minus 24 equal to 2x. Bring 2x inside so that we have a typical quadratic equation. So we are having x squared minus 2x minus 24 equal to 0. At this point, we factorize. Get your product first. What is our product? the constant which is minus 24 don't always forget to take your sign then get your sum what's our sum coefficient of x which is minus 2 so this at this point we are looking for two factors that when we add we get 2 if we multiply the same two factors we are getting 24 so what do you think the two factors are two numbers multiply to get 24 we add to get minus 2 that should be minus 6 times 4. Minus 6 times 4 will give me negative 24. Then if I say minus 6 plus 4, I am also getting a negative 2. So what do we do? Substitute minus 6 and 4 into this equation. So we are having x raised to the power 2 minus 6x plus 4x. Uh, okay, this minus 24 equal to zero. At this point, we group. We group it. X is common here and here. I'll bring one outside. X dividing X squared gives me X. X dividing 6X will give me 6. 4 is common. So I'll bring 4 outside. 4 is common because 4 can divide 4 and divide 24. Now 4 divide 4X will give me X. 4 dividing minus 24 will give me minus 6 equal to zero at this point you group the ones outside in one bracket so x plus four take the both of them equal to zero these brackets they are the same so take one equal to zero take one of the brackets equal to zero at this point you make x the subject so to do that i will have x to be equal to minus four because four crosses over to become negative then 6 crosses over, my x will become positive 6. Therefore, 
x is either minus 4 or positive 6. So that is how we were able to get the solution to this um, initial equation involving quadratic equation. Now to the next question, I will show you how to go about it and leave you to solve this. So what to do is to do the same thing I did in the first question. This has already been reduced to one single power, one single power. So what you need to do is to import any variable of your choice and substitute for 3 raised to power y. Let's assume we are using t. I will have t raised to power 2, okay, minus 6, put t here also, equal to 27. From this point, I believe you want to simplify it yourself. Thank you so much for paying attention to the end of the class. I will encourage you to like this video, share it to your friends, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Put the bell icon on so that whenever I upload my useful mathematics lessons, you will be notified. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. Catch you next time.